thank God for just being able to be in the season. I'll be reading a portion of Luke 2 this morning. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in the manger, because he was no there was no room in the inn, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And solid there were the angels, a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. Amen. Thank the Lord for the reading of his word. Amen. Now if I read the word of prayer. Our Father and our God. Yes, Father God, first of all, we're going to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this precious moment right now. We yes. thank you for right now. Yes. And Lord, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. Yes. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for another Sunday morning. Yes. Thank you, Father God, that and we slept in slumber last night, Father. The angel watched over us all night long. Didn't let no hurt, harm, or danger come toward us, Father. Didn't let no fire break out, no things break in. Father, then you touch us this morning with the thing of love. Woke us up in our right mind. Our eyes flew open and see a brand new day. Brand new day, Father. We thank you for this portion of it right now. Lord, we don't know if you're going to see all of it, but we thank you for what we already seen. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you this morning. Then, Father, you put on our mind to come to the house of worship one more time. You took care of us from last Sunday, Father, up until this present time right now. Come here, Father, to worship you and praise your name because you're the only one we can praise, Father. God, thank you for what you've already done for me. Thank you for each and every family that is represented now. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to be with us, Father. We need you. If we ever need you, Father God, we need you now. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to be here with us. Because when we got here, you was here already. So Lord, we ask you, Father God, to make this service what you have it to be. Not what we wanted, but what you have it to be. Lord, I ask you to bless our pastor this morning. Father God, I'm asking you, let him preach, Father, your doubtful word, Father God. Thank you for Pastor Benjamin this morning. Thank you for his family. Lord, I'm asking you, Father God, to be with us now. Bless the sick all over. All over this land, man, to bless the sick, Father. Bless the bereaved family, Father. Lord, we're living in a terrible time, but Lord, you're still in control. Whatever goes on, you're in control of it, Father. And we're so glad we can give you a name to pray this morning. Now, Lord, ask you to be with us in this service. And when it's all over, Father, we ask you to give us a rest of the place. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say amen. amen. Bless you. Amen. The Lord is good and is worthy to be praised. I'm just thinking, here we are again. The Lord brought us to a whole other year. And I don't know about you, but that's enough. And give it praise. Your grace and mercy.
that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, and give us a good All together. And he that keepeth his commandments dwell in him, and he in him. And here God we know that he abides in us by the Spirit which he has given us. Now 
on Christmas Day and on New Year's Day, January the 1st, the Sunday school class will be in recess. The morning devotion will start at 10.45 and the worship service will start at 11 o'clock. And that's on Christmas Day and on New Year's Day. And then on Sunday, January 8, 2023, Sunday school class and devotion service and morning worship will return to the regular schedule. It's our prayer that everyone remember the reason for the season and continue to carry it in your heart. We also want to uh, acknowledge today that uh, the fruit bags will be given out to you as you leave. Also, the ushers have passed out some calendars, and if you did not receive one, you can get one on the way out. They have been um, um, given to us by brother, by Sister Peaches and her husband. I can forget, I always forget the last name, but all y'all know. <laughs> and we want to say this morning, the family of Sister Lily Rose is asking for prayer because her uh, her son, Herman Rose Jr., had surgery on both of his feet. So we ask that you keep each other in prayer because prayer is the answer to all things. At this time, we're going to read the guidelines for attending church. Everyone attending Sunday school and Sunday worship service must be vaccinated. The Franklin Street door would be the only entrance and exit. When entering the church, each person must wear a face mask for the duration of the Sunday school worship service and must keep it on until they exit the building. Each person will have their temperature checked at the door. If it is higher than 100.4, entrance will be denied. Hand sanitizer will be available upon entry and administered to each person. Once inside the church, members and guests must not venture beyond the main vestibule, first floor restrooms, and the sanctuary. The Crystal Room, Cafeteria, Kitchen, and Education Center will be off limits to everyone. No one is allowed upstairs except for the trustees. Sunday school class will begin promptly at 9.15 in the sanctuary and will end at 10.15. This will be the only class available in the church. We recommend you arrive by 9 o'clock. Any personal communication with Pastor Benjamin must be by way of a written note, or you may call him during the week, and his number is in the bulletin. Social distancing guidelines of six feet must be followed. The back of each pew is marked with blue tape. The tape represents one seat. People who live together may sit together as this distancing is not required. <coughs> Until further notice, the order of service will remain modified and streamlined. Devotion will begin promptly at 1020. Service will begin at 1030. We recommend you arrive by 10 o'clock a.m. Not more than five choir members per law will be allowed during selections. Only choir members are to sing. There will be one offering for your convenience. Offering envelopes have been placed behind each pew. Offerings must be placed in an offering envelope. Members, we ask that you complete the envelope with your name, number, member number, date, designated offering, and amounts. If you need to use more than one envelope, you may do so. Ushers will not pass around offering baskets. Members and guests must follow social distancing guidelines of six feet to the tide box where they may place their envelopes. Missionary offerings are to be placed in an offering basket held by a trustee. During all to call, members and guests are to stand, remain in their pew, and pray. The covenant reading will be omitted during the Holy Communion. Members and guests must follow social distancing of six feet as they process to the communion table to pick up their own communion cup. Used communion cups are to be placed in cup holders behind the pews. At the end of the service, ushers will direct the congregation from the sanctuary. Everyone must exit the sanctuary immediately following the service. These are the announcements for today. We hope that each and every one of you continue to enjoy the holiday season. 
Remember the reason for the season. Amen. And continue to be blessed. Sound of my 
voice. It's indeed a blessing to be alive and know that you're alive physically. But it's even more of a blessing to know that you're alive eternally in Jesus Christ. Because to be alive in Jesus, you're alive forevermore. But we just thank God for or just blessing in such a mighty, a mighty way. Yes, sir. Amen. We're here today to celebrate his goodness, to celebrate his mercy, to celebrate his grace, and to celebrate his love, which is overshadowing all of us, every last one of us. is a living witness to the love, grace, and mercy of Jesus Christ. Let's give the Lord some more hands. Amen. 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 As I have been, as I have informed you all, that we are living in some perilous times. And we know that uh, we are watching the news more so now than we've ever watched it. Amen. That's a good thing. Uh, it's been reported that Trump is calling for the suspension of the Constitution of the United States of America. <laughs> Amen. I don't know how far he's going to go. Amen. But uh, he's way out on the limb. Amen. 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 We do know that Mitch McConnell had something to say about it, but what about the rest of the Republican Party? Who makes up the silent majority? Amen. Amen. They haven't said a word. Amen. How sad it is. We need to pray. We need to pray for our political leaders on Capitol Hill. Amen. He needs prayer. Amen. As we already know, Warnock won through popular vote. Warnock won through popular vote. Warnock won through popular vote. Won through popular vote. The Senate seat in Georgia, in spite of Trump, sending Herschel Walker up as a white man's puppet. That's exactly what they did. Amen. Amen. How sad it is. How sad it is. How sad it is. All of those uh, candidates that Trump had something to do with, they lost. Amen. 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 You can recall all of them. Trump wanted to have a red wave. Yes. Governmental positions. Amen. But the Lord stepped in and fixed it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, yes. It's also been reported. Trump's establishment was found guilty of conspiracy and tax fraud for the past 17 years. And he was indicted uh, for all 17 counts. Now they say, they say Trump, they say Trump wasn't aware of it. Uh, they say he wasn't aware of it at all. But if you believe Trump wasn't aware, then unfortunately, you are unaware that Trump is one of the biggest liars that this country has ever had. Huh? Amen. 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 We need to pray. We need to pray. And as I have said before, you know what I'm saying. We, we know that with all of what is against him, with all of what is uh, looming over him, you know what I'm saying. It's as if he's uh, it's like, what, what is this Don? The guy that was, uh, you couldn't uh, do any, get anything on it, and all this kind of stuff. Couldn't make nothing stick. Teflon Don, you see what I'm saying? Is it Teflon Don? Is that the way it is now? Amen. But you know, you got to take into consideration God got his own set time. Got his own set way. You know, you don't have to do that with just looking at biblical history. And you know how God dealt with negative leaders, huh? You know, if you call Nebuchadnezzar to the stand, he'd tell you. Uh, talk with me somebody. We, we could go around the back and several others, huh? Oh, yes. God got his own way in his own time. You see, truth, as I've said before, truth crushed to the ground will rise again. Rome can't sit on the throne forever. No, it can't. Amen. God will, 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 will deal with it. Amen. So let us be prayerful. Amen. Why, preacher, why must we be prayerful? We must be prayerful because we can get a prayer through. We can contact God's majestic throne of grace. Why? Because we belong to him and he belongs to us. And he listens to us. He listens to what we have to say. And he acts on it in his own time. And it is going away. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord some more hand. Praise the Lord. 
you for what you have given in the Lord's house today. May the Lord bless you abundantly. In return, amen. We do know the Lord is one who gives us all of what we stand in the need of. He supplies our every need according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. It's prayer time. It's time for us to petition heaven. It's time for us to call upon a God whose hearing is not dull. Yeah, yeah. It's time for us to call upon a God whose arms are not too short to reach us. For he is a God who hears our prayers. He's a God who's concerned about our prayers. Men ought to always pray about faith. Let your request be made known. For we do know God is a prayer here in God. Let us stand at this time. Realize that there may be things troubling your spirit. There may be things overshadowing you. With the spirit of depression. But we know God is able to move that spirit of depression. God is able to open that door that needs open. He's able to make that way that needs to be made. All you got to do is call on him. And then trust in him and believe that he's able to do it and will do it in his own way and in his own time. And I declare he will. We're going to ask that Brother Clark, Brother William Clark, ask that he will come and share with us our altar call invocation.
Oh God, but we know you are still on the throne. Amen. We know you are able that through you all things are possible. We don't believe you brought us this far to leave us. But you promised never to leave us, nor to forsake us. You promised to be with us always, even to the end of the world. Well, God, we love you today. Love you because you first loved us. You love the world so you gave your only begotten Son. Whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We know you didn't send your Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Thank you for this pastor today. You brought him from a mighty long way. Thank you for this congregation, this church, this local church, where I got started, where you called me into the ministry. We thank you, oh God. Thank you for all of the members. Oh God, so many are sick, so many are standing in the need of prayer. Some have one problem and some another. But we know that nothing too hard for you. You can do anything but fail. Lord, we turn it all over to you. Move by your spirit. Have your way. Touch somebody. Lift up somebody. Somebody have bowed down heads today. Somebody's in sorrow and grief today because of the loss of their loved one. Remember all of those who have lost loved ones by murder. Have mercy upon those who are going around taking other lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. We thank you, Lord. You've been so good to us. Down through the years, you've been good, Lord. You look down beyond our fault and you saw our need. Thank you. Thank you for this community. Thank you for all of the local churches all over the nation. So much sickness, oh God. Affliction. We know much of what's happening today is signs of your coming. You said there will be earthquakes in our place. You said there will be nation against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. You said there would be pestilence, contagious diseases. We heard you when you said, as it was in the days of Lot. They were eating, they were drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. They were buying, they were selling, building everywhere. Lord, everywhere we look at building, signs of your coming. In the name of Jesus, we know soon and very soon time that has been shall be no more. Thank you that this is not the end of us here. Thank you for that place you've gone to prepare for us. You said you were going to prepare a place for us. You said if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Receive you unto myself that where I am, you said. There you may be also. We believe that you want us to be where you are. Thank you. We thank you, oh God. Help us to hold on just a little while longer. Help us to keep trusting you. Help us to keep believing in you, oh God. Help us to keep having confidence in you. We know that we need, we have need of patience. That after we have done your will, we shall receive the promise. For soon, very soon, he that shall come, will come, and will not tell. Thank you, O God. Keep protecting us, O God. Keep keeping us, O God. Keep preserving our going out and our coming in. In the name of Jesus. We believe that your word said, the angel of the Lord, in camping round right them that fear you. Thank you. We thank you, oh God. We know that we can make do it for a night, but
But joy, I said joy, is coming in the morning. We know that on that good Friday, Jesus Christ didn't have no problem. He suffered greatly for, for us. Went to the cross, died for the sins of the world. He had much pain, much suffering. But he knew Sunday morning was coming. And he would rise up from the grave with all power given unto him. Thank you, and thank you. Hold on, my brother and sister, to his unchanging hand. Everything's going to be all right. There's a bright side somewhere. Let's not stop until we find it. Thank you, O oh God. Mr. Pastor, as he preached now, give all of us receptive hearts. Give us open up our hearts and receive your word. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Our Savior, we pray that all of the people of God said, Amen. Amen. And Amen.
Every eye closed. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we come within thine divine presence in the name of Jesus. We come grateful, we come appreciative, we come thankful. Realizing, Lord God, that you have blessed us from the early rocking of our cradle up to the middle of an hour. You are a good God. We come, merciful Father, to praise your name. We come, merciful Father, to exalt your cause. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you have been to us, all that you have done for us, all that you still are to us. We thank you. We ask now, Lord, you would bless us, Lord God, as we prepare to hear your word being preached in our hearing. Open up, I do pray, the doors of our understanding. Open up the doors, I do pray, Mr. Father, of our receiving your word. And I pray, Mr. Father, that you would bless that mighty way. Feed us from your word, through your word, by your word. Look on me who stands, Mr. Father, behind this sacred desk. I pray that you would help to be yourself. Fill me full of yourself. I will be to declare your word between the living and the dead. Bless now, I do pray in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Those of you who have your Bibles, turn with me to Second Peter, the third chapter, verses 13, 14, and 15. Amen. That's Second Peter, the third chapter, verses thirteen through fifteen, where you find these words. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Now we want to share with you that same scripture passage from the Living Bible paraphrase, which reads as follows. But we are looking forward to God's promise of new heavens and a new earth. Afterwards, where there will be only goodness Dear friends, while you are waiting for our Lord to come, try hard to live without sinning, and be at peace with everyone, so that he will be pleased with you when he returns. And remember why he is waiting. He is giving us time to get his message of salvation out to others. Amen. Amen. We want to talk briefly from this title, I don't want to hurry too long, A Believer's Outlook. A Believer's Outlook. Look at your next door neighbor after you finish writing it down, that's if you care to write it down. Look at them. Hey, Amen. If you haven't spoken to them, speak to them. Say, hey, how you doing? And then repeat after me, A Believer's Outlook. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Pray with me if you will. Pray with me if you will. The question is asked, my beloved, just what is our purpose on earth for? According to Genesis 1.28, man is to multiply and replenish the earth along with other things 
assigned by God. Now, hypothetically speaking, hypothetically speaking, hypothetically speaking, if some alien nation came to earth to observe our moral aptitude, just what conclusion do you think they would draw? They would probably draw the conclusion that man's major purpose is to make all the money he can, absorb all the power he can, and then rack up all the possessions that he can afford. We see, my beloved, greed and covetousness would certainly score high on their list of observations. But yes, my beloved, it's true, it's true, that on a global level, they will see large nations trying to take over smaller nations. Amen. Talk to me, somebody. We see that with Russia and Ukraine. Talk to me, somebody. On a national level, they would see corporations using their money to purchase government power and amassing all of the great wealth at the expense of the majority. On the local level, they are government lenders and government leaders holding office not for the good that they can do, but for the power they can gain. Are you all going to pray with me? And then when it comes to us who are the common citizens, we've been sucked in by TV ads that encourage and overwhelm us to buy products that in some cases fall short of what they claim to be. But yet, but yet we are encouraged, in spite of the inflation, Amen. to buy much of what is being advertised and sold in order that we might maintain our iconic lifestyle. Uh -huh. Talk to me somebody. Yes. Are you ever pray with me? Yes. If you pray with me, everything shall be all right. Everything shall be all right. But when it comes, when it comes, don't leave me now. But when it comes, when it comes, uh, uh, to giving to God some of what he has given to us. Some of us fall short, uh, failing to give back to the hand that has given us all that we have had, all that we still have, and all that we will ever have. Talk to me somebody. And I'm praying with you. Everything you have is a gift from God. Everything that you have now, big or small, it's a gift from God. Are y'all gonna pray with me? Yes, yes, yes. In our text, Peter is writing to Gentiles who had been converted by faith in Jesus Christ. And 1 Peter 2 and 9 says they had been called out of darkness into the marvelous light. Now Peter was challenging them, my beloved. Peter was challenging them to live according to Christ's teaching and pursue spiritual maturity. But when it came to the spread of the gospel, Peter had no time for foolishness. Talk to me sometime. In 2 Peter, in 2 Peter 1, 14 and 15, alludes to the fact that Peter wrote this letter sometime shortly before his martyrdom, probably from Rome. Talk to me somebody. You know, Peter was put to death. Talk to me somebody. He didn't want to be crucified. Talk to me somebody. With heads up. Talk to me somebody. He wanted to be crucified uh, upside down. Talk to me somebody. Y'all gonna pray with me? Yes, he didn't want to be crucified the same way his master was crucified. He wanted to be crucified upside down. Talk to me somebody. Y'all gonna pray with me? Yes, 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 yes. For, for Peter had to make the most of the time he had left on this side of the grave. For it's true, my beloved, that Peter's first epistle, or his first letter, deals with external problems. But in this second letter, Peter turned to the internal problems that threatened the performance of true Christianity. For he, for he wanted his converts to understand that the Christian life demands, oh yes it does, the Christian life demands diligence in pursuing all the virtues of a pure faith, like knowledge, temperance, patience, brotherly kindness, talk to me somebody, and charity. And he didn't have much time left. Talk to me somebody, y'all. 
one to cross. Are y'all gonna pray with me? But now, 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 now the question is asked. If you knew you didn't have much time left on this earth, would you change anything about you? Talk to me somebody. Are y'all gonna pray with me? Not anything about some member of your family. Talk to me somebody. Are y'all gonna pray with me? But, but, uh, but, uh, but would you change anything about you? Talk to me somebody. Realizing that everything of any earthly value must be left behind, I'm sure you may want to uh, update your will. That's something you might want to do. You might even consider giving away some of your possessions before your demise. Talk to me somebody. But what other actions would you take? If you knew exactly where you were going to, as the old saying go, kick the butt. Talk to me somebody. Are y'all gonna pray with me? Just what would you do? Or better still, what would you do for a live, personal visit from the master? Talk to me somebody. Are y'all gonna pray with me? What would you change around in your own home to accommodate a visit? from the master. Talk to me somebody. What preparations would you make before meeting your master and your savior? Would you dress up in the finest outfit that you have? Would you dust off the Bible and put it in a place where he can see it? Talk to me somebody. And would you offer him a meal to eat? And would you play gospel music to set the tone for your Christian home? Talk to me somebody. Just what would you do? Talk to me somebody. Are y'all gonna pray? But you see, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is not interested in any of that. But in your preparation for him, I'll tell you what he is interested in for you to do. He is interested in you asking yourself, would you come to church more often? Would you be willing to reassess your priorities? Would you pray more? Would you read the Bible more often? Now, if you do any or all of these things, especially if you're not doing them at this present time in your life, they tell me, they tell me, they tell me, what's keeping you from doing them right now? Talk to me somebody. If the shoe fits, just say ouch, and then say hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are y'all gonna pray with you? Yes, if you pray with me, everything shall be all right. Now, now, now the verses, the verses that mix up our text in the Living Bible translation makes the Christian's purpose Christian crystal clear, rather. For if you plan, if you plan now, if you plan to live the Christian life as best as you can with God's help. Because you got to have God's help in order to live this life. Talk to me, somebody, the best way you can. Are y'all going to pray with me? Yeah, the Holy Spirit inside has to be activated. Talk to me, somebody. You got to lean on His guidance. You got to lean on His instruction. Talk to me, somebody. Are y'all going to pray with me? Yes, 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 yes. Then you need Peter points out just what we have to do to accomplish godly living. Talk to me somebody. Yes, sir. Yes. A lot of us don't think of it. Yes, sir. God living as being that important. We say, oh, I'm all right with what living that I am doing. Talk to me somebody. But is it God living? Talk to me somebody. Or, 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 or is it a mixture of worldly living? Are y'all gonna pray with me? Can Christ be seen in your living? Are y'all gonna pray with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, Peter, Peter points out just what we have to do to accomplish God in living. First, Peter says, in essence, to try to avoid transgression. Right. If there was anybody who tried real hard to avoid sinning, it was Peter. Why, preacher? Why, preacher? Because Peter knew it was himself who denied Jesus yes. three times. Yes. Even after declaring to Jesus that he would never abandon Jesus. Yes. Of course, of course, of course, of course, God knows how hard it is to avoid, to avoid sin. God knows how hard it is. That's why he prepared a new covenant, realizing that man in all of his efforts failed to keep the old covenant. Talk to me somebody. Well, I don't even want to think of what God's scoreboard would look like if it wasn't for Jesus' death, if it wasn't for Jesus' blood on that road cross, ushering in the new covenant and saying goodbye to the old covenant. Thank God for the, for the new covenant. Talk to me somebody. 
Yeah, yeah, the new covenant, give me another chance. Talk to me, somebody. If I fail, the new covenant, give me another chance. If I sin, talk to me, somebody. The new covenant, give me a talk to me, somebody. You got to control on that. Another chance. But now, difficulty that we may experience in our attempts to avoid sin does not excuse us from doing the very best we can to be sin free. Right. Talk to me somebody. Are right. oh, y'all gonna pray with me? Yeah. Sin should be like an enemy to us. Amen. Because it is. Talk to me somebody. Yeah. And it's ever, it's ever with us. It's in our mind. It's in our thoughts. It's in what we see. Talk to me somebody. It's what we behold with the eyes. Talk to me somebody. It's what we feel. Talk to me. Are y'all gonna pray with me? Sin is all around the sin is all over. Sin is all within us. Talk to me somebody. Pray with me. Yes, if you pray with me, everything shall be out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I say again, I say again, uh, the difficulty that we may experience in our attempts to avoid sin does not excuse us from doing our very best to be sin free. But here's what Paul wrote about sin. I said, here's what Paul wrote about sin to the fledgling church at Rome. He said in Romans 6, 6 and 12, that the old man is crucified with Christ. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, that the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth, yes, we should not serve sin. Yes, and then Paul charged him with these words. Let not sin therefore reign, yes. control, yes. and dominance. Yes. Talk to me somebody. Yes. Let not yes. sin therefore reign in your mortal yes. body. Yes. For you see, listen to me now. I'm going to speak on it. Well, you see, we spend a lot of time in the mirror. Right. Uh, so Prepping and foundationing and foundationing, adoring and admiring the way we look. But God wants us to take the same kind of care on the inside that we take on the outside. Now pray with me. We wash up, clean up, fix up, dress up the outside. Why do we do that? We do that to impress all of mankind that may look upon us. Talk to me, somebody. We go out into the world. Talk to me, somebody. Everybody that looks upon us, we want to be looking our best. Are y'all gonna pray with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. But you see, you see. God is not impressed with your outside appearance. Why, preacher? Because man looks at the outer appearance, but God looks at the heart. Man looks at the car you drive, the clothes you wear, the house you live in, the job you may have. But God, God looks at the heart. Talk to me, son. Are y'all gonna pray with me? Yeah, for how washed, cleaned up, fixed up, and dressed up are you on the inside? That's what God is concerned about. Yeah. Yes, sir. God's design for our actions within our earthly living is to line up with his heavenly will for our earthly existence. We must fight the temptation of sin. Yes. In order to be a light that makes a difference in this world of immense darkness. For you see, sin, for see, sin is nothing more than blind opposition yes. to the wisdom of God. Right. Sin is unbecoming to anybody, right. especially to us who are the redeemed. Mm -hmm. But there are TV hey. programs, and I'm quite sure you all have seen them. Oh, the TV programs that you may have seen entitled Neighborhood Wars. Uh -oh. That cell phone camera recorded. Uh, talk to me, somebody. Yeah, Involving next door neighbors feuding with each other yeah. over something that escalates into periods of cursing each other out, right. which is being doubt. Yeah. Then the fighting starts with a desire to do bodily harm. Yeah. And then there is another TV program entitled uh, Customer Wars. All right. Also, yeah. cell phone recorded. Involving certain customers angry about something, no doubt that was minor, but they end up talking loud and using foul language 
in the store where everybody can hear it. Then they proceed to knock over and throw to the floor as much of the store products as they possibly can. Well, you see, the humanistic nature of these people are seen all over this country as being at its lowest level. Talk to me somebody. Are y'all going to pray with me? Don't let nobody fool you. The, the human nature can stoop awfully low. Are y'all going to pray with me? Talk to me somebody. Are y'all going to pray with me? But, but you see, there is, there is nothing flattering about inappropriate behavior. For God's perfect plan for us would never in include anything indecent, not right. include anything immoral or even inconsiderate of others. Right. But if we intend to pattern ourselves after Christ, on, then we must become guilty of being in the purging business. Huh? Right. Right. We must purge ourselves of every sin and every sinful way that does so easily beset us. Yeah. Then we need to run on, fight on, pray on, until Jesus cracks the sky. Talk to me, somebody. With his return, and he's going to crack it. Oh, yes, he is. Talk about it because he said he would. Are y'all going to pray with me? Secondly, secondly, Peter is encouraging saints to be at peace with everyone so that Christ will be pleased when he returns. But this is the season, as we all know, this is the season when we send out Christmas cards that affirms God's position on peace. Many of the cards say peace on earth and goodwill toward me. If ever, if ever, if ever there was a time for our world to have peace and goodwill, that time is now. With all of the mass killings, the wars, protesting and rioting in the streets of many countries all over this world. For the opposite of peace is pandemonium. But there is, it seems, a pandemonious spirit of turmoil plaguing our entire world. Government leaders no longer agree with each other. Divisions and racism can be seen all the way from top of the hill, all the way down to the bottom of the hill. People arguing about what right should be done. But efforts, yet efforts to set things in the proper order are not being done. Right. Uh -huh. Solomon in Proverbs 29 and 9 had something to say about bargaining, something to say about contention and disagreement. He warned that if we would never find peace, he said we will never find peace if we keep entering into a contest of contentious people. If you are unable to avoid a particular dispute, if you're unable to avoid a particular speech, yeah, 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 or controversy, you should do your very best to de-escalate the situation. Come to me, son. Are y'all going to pray with me? You should be found guilty of encouraging fellowship and camaraderie, especially in the church. Don't be negative at all. Talk to me, son. Are y'all going to pray with me? You know, when we were kids and we see two get ready to fight, said, he didn't fit it. Go ahead and do it. Talk to me, somebody. Are y'all going to pray with some of them may have had a dog years ago? We know what I'm saying. We see somebody that we don't like to get him. Get him. Sick and sick and sick and get him. Talk to me, somebody. Y'all going to pray with me? We don't need to hang it on. Are y'all going to pray with me? For your words and actions as a concerned Christian should invite a spirit of peace. Well, you see, my beloved child, you see, uh, to show enough to have the peace of Christ in your life requires a certain walk. Say a certain walk. Talk to me somehow. Yeah, 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 yeah. For you see the Apostle Paul, the Apostle John rather said in 1 John 2 and 6, if you say Christ abides in you, then you ought to walk as he walked. Talk to me somehow. But not only that, but the indwelling spirit will most definitely give us peace. And yes, there is also a requirement, Paul said in Galatians 5 and 25, that if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Talk to me somebody. Are y'all going to pray with me? And Jesus topped it all off when he said in John 14, 27, peace. I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives. 
Jesus is also able to distribute that kind of peace that passes all understanding. Peace that you can't understand. Talk to me, somebody. Somebody's got peace, got a peaceful spirit in the midst of a terminal storm. Talk to me, somebody. With the lightning flashing, the thundering room, the, 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 the storm rains falling, they have peace. Talk to me, somebody. Don't get connected to Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Are y'all gonna pray with me? Yes, 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 yes. I'm talking about that kind of peace. Yeah, that passes all understanding. It's a peace, brother. It's a peace, a peace that can relax the nerves. That can dissolve the doubts. That can calm the emotions. And which can provide a song in the darkest of nights. I'm talking about real peace. It's a peace that can strengthen one's faith, Woo. that can dry one's tears, right. that can lighten one's load, yes. that can abundantly bless one's heart. Yes. This peace has a tranquility Amen. that those gardens cannot supply, Come on. that Lord glorious is. sunsets cannot furnish, right. yes. that the sound of babbling brooks oh, yes. cannot be. Right. Talk to me somebody. I'm talking about real peace. Yeah, for it's the kind of peace that helps one face the unfaceable, to bear the unbearable, to endure the undurable, to accept the unacceptable, where there is no peace. We are a sign. God's people are a sign. The task to properly bring peace to the forefront. To whoever or whatever. I got to pray by first having the peace of God in our own living. Amen. And then be an upright Christian example in our living. Right. For it is spiritually mandated oh, yes. upon us to be righteous yeah. in yeah. our yeah. conduct. Yeah. Matured yeah. in our Christian manners. Yeah. Pleasing in our personality. Yeah. Simply because our spirit-led godliness can most definitely help to us in peace in our little corner of the world. Are you all going to pray with me? Finally, my beloved, he reminds us that God is giving us time to get his message of salvation out to us. Good God Almighty, you ought to be able, you ought to be able to, to know that you've talked to somebody within the last few weeks about Jesus Christ, because time is winding up. I wonder if you're praying with me, if you're praying with me, everything shall be all right. Good God Almighty, you ought to be able, you ought to be able to tell somebody about Jesus Jesus, the Son of the living God, the God of man. And it's imperative that we use the Word of God because it's unlike any other word written in a book that you can find and read. And it's still the number one top seller after all the years.
so very grateful to have Reverend William Clark. This is where he started off at. He said, he said every now and then he has to come back by where he started off at. And that's all right. We, we thank God for him. He, he's such a precious person. And, uh, he's one of my friends. And I can't give him that word on everybody. <laughs> hey, Amen. But we're grateful to his being with us here today. Grateful to Mysterious staff, and to our musicians, and our ushers, and our nurses, great to all of you who were able to come out to help make this service what it has been. I realize that we have um, reduced our Christmas and New Year's service, and I trust that you all will be mindful of that particular schedule that we have established here. Amen. We, we want to try to give you some time to uh, be, spend some time with your family before we have to come to church. And I realize some of you may, may be able to come, some of you may not. You may have visiting you know, from family from out of town, whatever. Whatever it is, but do your best. Come out if you can. Amen. So that the Lord can bless us. We, 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 we don't have no control over Christmas being uh, uh, established on a Sunday. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's the way it is this year. New Year's too, you know. We still want to, we still want to hold service, even if it is Christmas. We want to hold service, even if it is New Year's Day. All right, all right. Bless you all. All us, pray to you all. Also to our, to our recording technician. <laughs> I know you all want to wait to, uh, you know, you get home later on today. You want to turn your computer on. Just see how you looked uh, as you marched around. See, that, see if that dress was fitting right or that hat was sitting on the right. Uh, talk to me somebody. Amen. 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 That's what y'all be doing. I know that's what y'all be doing. Amen. Praise the Lord. We just thank God that the Lord is blessing. But we don't know exactly how much longer the Lord is going to allow what is taking place to continue, but we do know one thing. He's in charge. Man is not in charge of this. God is in charge. Amen. And knowing that he's in charge, I know everything is going to be alright. All, right. all hearts, minds are clear. Let us all stand. Amen. 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 Every head bowed and eye closed. Loving God, we come at the close of this another service. We thank the Lord God for what you have allowed to take place. We thank you, Lord, for the praises that went up and the blessings that came back down. We thank you for all of these faithful people who saw fit to gather themselves together between these consecrated walls of this and of the Lord's day. We thank you, Mr. Father, for giving us and allowing us to have a good time in the Second of St. Paul Baptist Church on this and other Sunday. Bless us now as we prepare to depart from this place. We pray, Lord God, that you would go with us, stand by us, watch over us, and take care of us. And it is thy holy righteous name. We thank you, Lord God, for how you blessed us, brought us all the way down from January to December, not too far away from another Christmas, not too far away from the closing out of an old year, the beginning of a new year. Lord, we thank you. You've been good to us. Now we ask Lord God to bless and keep us as we ask in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen.